This is Colin from ShiftSynth1. This is my third class on the Novation Circuit Editor. Today we're going to be covering the oscillator section of the Novation Circuit Editor. We're just going to be focusing on this box today, oscillator 1. Now I wanted to give you guys a little walkthrough of how I'm going to do this lesson. Here I have the oscilloscope by Smart Electronics, the Smexoscope. This is free if you want to download it. I'll include a link to the download in the description if you guys uh, want to explore these sonic illustrations a little bit more. But the reason I have this up is I'm going to show you um, the way some of these sounds look to give you a better understanding of the concepts that I'm discussing. Now there's an issue here. If I click on the circuit editor, it'll actually uh, minimize the smexoscope, as you can see. So I'm, what I'm going to do a couple times here is I'm going to assign a macro knob to the parameters here, and I'll show you when I do that. But the, the problem that we encounter with that is that these parameters are not actually adjusted when I change the position of the macro knob. So that may be a little bit confusing to you, but I think you guys will catch on. Basically, if the position is changing here and it's assigned to a parameter here, it's the same as if I'm changing that parameter knob because I have the depth max, and we covered that in an earlier lesson. I'm going to start this lesson today with a discussion of the waveforms. The list of waveforms here basically range in complexity. We start with the sine wave, uh, which is the simplest waveform. It has no overtones. It goes to triangle, which has the second fewest overtones. And then it moves down from sawtooth to a pulse width to a square and then goes into wavetables. Now we'll cover wavetables in a little bit, but I wanted to cover these initial half of the wave portion first. So the sine wave, most people know what this looks like. It's simply, see I've got a nice good picture there of the sine wave. Um, this is just a C on the Novation circuit. It's very uncomplicated, it has no overtones. I'm not going to show you an illustration of every single one of these waveforms, but I do want to discuss pulse width. The pulse width waves contain a pulse withdraw, and this looks like a cliff. So if you start on the saw, and I'll show you this, it looks like a straight saw wave. Now if I bring it down to a pulse withdraw, it'll add a clip to that saw wave. And you can see it there in the middle. So that clip adds some density to the sound. So if I skip down here to the 5.5, five, what you'll notice is that the pulse width is bigger, significantly bigger. Now, what's happening here is as you go down this pulse width index, it's increasing the size of that pulse width. So if I, stop, if I go to saw 1.9, it'll almost look like a square wave. And if I go to a pulse width, it effectively is a square wave. It's a square wave that is made of a pulse withdraw. That may not make very much sense right now, but I'll go into the difference here uh, when I'm changing some of the parameters. So wavetables are a collection of nine waves that Novation has put together as a group. The way you access these nine different waveforms is through the pulse width index. So I'm going to skip over the wave interpol right now, and I'm going to go to the pulse withdraw index. The pulse withdraw index contains two different functions. The wavetable function will change the index of the wavetable between 1 and 9. So if I set this to negative 64, and I go up here, and I assign the destination to oscillator 1 pulse withdraw index, we're going to see this oscillate through nine different waveforms. And it's going to be very obvious when they change. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. All right. So I'm going to show you one more example of that. All the wavetables follow the exact same formula. Let's do talkie DS. 
pretty smooth waveform there. Now I'm going to go up one, that's the second one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I must have uh, skipped over one there. There you go. So the pulse withdraw index performs a second function, which is adjusting the location of the pulse withdraw index in a pulse withdraw waveform. So I'm going to illustrate this by taking the pulse withdraw index to zero and selecting a SAW 64 pulse withdraw. So that's going to be a nice thick pulse withdraw, as you can see. And I'm going to take the pulse withdraw index to 64. Now, the, now since the, de, the oscillator one pulse withdraw macro knob is at zero, that means the pulse withdraw index is currently at negative 64. So there actually won't be a pulse withdraw because what happens is the pulse withdraw index is eliminating that pulse withdraws. But as you see, I'm going to move this. It's moving that pulse withdraw down the waveform. Now it looks exactly the same no matter which pulse withdraw you select. I'm actually going to pick a pulse width wave to show you the difference between a square wave and the pulse width wave. So actually, since I have the pulse withdraw index set at 64, it has eliminated the waveform altogether. But it's going to kick in real quick here as I up the oscillator 1 pulse withdraw index. So as you can see, it's just growing that pulse width. And eventually, when it's all the way up, it's just got a blip. But if I turn it all the way down, it's going to turn it off entirely. So that's the function of the pulse withdraw index. The wave interpol is specifically for wavetables. What it does is it smooths the transition between the nine wavetables. So I'm going to take that pulse withdraw index down to 64 again, and I'm going to assign macro knob 2 to the wavetable interpolation for oscillator 1. I'm going to select the Anna triangle. It's a pretty simple waveform right now. And I'm going to cycle through the pulse, the index of the wavetable. And that's slowly transitioning to a saw wave. Okay, so there's an issue here. I actually did not turn up the depth of macro 2, so I'm going to turn that up right now. So if I do that again, and I turn the wave interpolation all the way up on macro 2, and then adjust the pulse withdraw index, you won't get that clippy sound anymore. It's just a smooth transition to the saw wave. All right. So I'm going to take the pulse withdraw index back up to zero. And I'm going to switch to a saw, uh, sine wave. I'm going to take these off. And I'm going to turn off macro knob 2. So VSync is basically an, a form of FM synthesis where they apply a third oscillator to the oscillator sound to create harmonics within the waveform. So this is best viewed by sweeping. So if I look at take a sine wave, I'm going to assign the destination of macro 1 to the oscillator 1 VSync and show you guys what that looks like. And as you can see, that just went up an octave. It just doubled the frequency. And as you can see, you get some pretty crazy harmonics and timbres as you go up this. So you guys can experiment with that one. I use VSync depth a ton. It's a ton of fun to use. Um, it adds some really cool tones to your sounds. So yeah, play around with that. It's, it's, it's great.
density is the number of voices. So if I keep if I change the macro knob one to density and macro two to density detune, oscillator one density detune, you won't hear anything when I change the density of the sine wave, uh, well any waveform, if there's no density detune because it's exactly the same tone layered on top of each other. There's nothing differentiating it. So you, the human ear can't hear the difference. So I'm turning up the oscillator one density right now. Since there's no density detune applied, it's, there's no effect. So the density detune takes the various voices that you layer on with density, and it, it, it adds some detune uh, between the voices. So let me turn this all the way up. The density is gonna go all the way up. And the density detune is going to start adding. It actually adds some vibrato there, which is real, but it's really just um, detune between the voices. So if I take the the density down now with the detune all the way up. going to return back to uh, to no detune because there's only one voice. All right, so I'm going to return macro knob 2 to 0. I'm going to take this off and macro 2 off. Semitones adjust the tuning of the oscillator by one half step, but if I play a tone and then I move up the semitones, it's just a half step each. And there's an octave. 12 semitones is an octave. Sense is the same thing as semitones, except it's, it's much finer. A fraction of a semitone. The increments are sense of one one hundredth of a semitone, but basically th with those two, I just like to to use my ears. Setting the two oscillators slightly high, one slightly high in sense and one slightly low in sense, will give you some breadth to your sound, a little bit of density. Um, semitones is a great way to get octaves in your voices. I'm not going to go in too far into sound design with some of these videos because I want you guys to explore. Um, my primary purpose is understanding the functions. Pitch bend, it's not applicable to the Novation circuit. It's a carryover from the Mini Nova. This is the pitch bend that applies to the pitch wheel in the Mini Nova. So if it was turned all the way up, then that would be 12 semitones on the pitch bend wheel. So you can't use it on the Novation circuit. Maybe they'll add an add-on at some point. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe with circuit two, they'll have a pitch bend wheel. Who knows? But right now, that's useless. So that just about covers it for this section. Um, this is a huge area. It's worth spending a ton of time in, playing with the sounds, playing them with oscillator one, oscillator two, trying to get a variety of sounds, and just really exploring this. This is all you need to make some great sounds alone. So if you if you really invest some time into this area, it'll pay off. In a later class, I'm going to cover some sound design and play around with this a little bit more, but this should give you a great introduction to the oscillators, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks.